All right, here we go, people. It's uh, a much needed rainy day in Milwaukee. It's uh, September 24th, and uh, we're going to get rocking and rolling because here's what I know. What you do today shows up 90 days later. So if you're thinking about 90 days from now, you're basically effectively should be thinking about January 1. January 1. And I'm going to keep reminding the group that you got to keep, you're working 90 days out. What you do today shows up 90 days later. And so life's about choices. In our business, the beautiful thing about our business is our businesses are direct reflection of the choices we make. And we're going to talk a little bit through that because today, as I'm continuing on this theme of layering of lessons, there are things that people want to hear. And then there are things that people need to hear. And I'm going to, my layering of lessons are the things that you need to hear so that I will you to January 1 and you don't accidentally show up on January 1. And it's about living life with intention and purpose. So here we go. Mission, vision, values, beliefs, and perspectives. Three things I want to call out. First, there's some three key themes of where our mission, vision, values, beliefs, and perspectives show up in today's team meeting. One is teamwork. Everyone, t teamwork, um, together, everyone achieves more. Two, equity, opportunities for all. And three is success results through people. And you'll see how that is interwoven into today's meeting, but I want to share with you something first. And I'm going to take the time to read this so that it helps seed something into your brain. There's a group of about 60 plushes people. And last week, they had an opportunity to take advantage of something that is very cultural for us. Brett Timmerman, $97. Nick Fetting, $109. Joe Pemberton, $117. Melissa Waters, $131. Benji, $133. Laura Zadek, $133. Renee Farrar, $136. Corey Bolt, $158. Julie Lakin, $170. Ashley Meyer, $171. Bitsy Williamson, $172. Deanne Hansen, $189. Connie Cummings, $203. Kaylee Novotny, $205. Sarah Reardon, $210. Marcus Auerbach, $231. Leanne Pluster, $241. Leah Bird, $247. The second group of 16 people, David Moe, 256, Terrell, 278, Annie Stabler, 292, Aletha Champagne, 307, Rob Wessel, 336, Bethany Clark, 340, Emily Gilders, 346, Katie Falk, 354, Bruce Gallagher, 375, Tony Spot, who's retired, mind you, 396, Laura Brewster, 399, Abby Wall, 404, Abigail Jacqua, 410, Katie Neville, 416, Janine Warner, 474, Rick Rubin, 497. The third group, 15 people, Amanda Schroeder, 503, Todd Weikert, 517, Kimmy Herbert, 518, Kathy Shaw, 526, Peter Gossman, 535, Nikki Kunick, 586, Steph Minnick, 588, Shauna Knight, 610, Demara Bolton, 617, Judy Pemberson, 627, um, Jim, 677, Mandy Cotty, 713, Nicole McGonigal, 789, Molly Gallagher, 819, Chuck Hansen, 985. And the final group of 12 is Griffin Peterson at 1022, Tamika Jones Clay at 1067, Santi Speranza at 1119, John Molitor at 1606, Kathy Riley, who's at a competitor, mind you, is $2,022. Gail and Jim Zeman are at $2,022. Jay Smith was $2,084. Sarah Oberbrunner was $2,182. Kevin Gardy was $2,736. Karen Trimble was $3,245. Andy Stillman was $3,447. And Martha Ola was $4,998. Now, do you know what all those people have in common? It's about 67 names that I read off. They earned profit share last week. And the reason why I share with you the names is I think there is power in knowing what your peers are taking advantage of in the opportunity in the moment. And when you look at some of these names, and I use the example of someone like Tony Spot, who lives in Seattle, Washington, who is completely retired from the business, is the opportunity, and this is just within one 30-day window, and the stories that this profit share opportunity does and provides for people is amazing. I know for many people, and I'll use the example of like, we'll get texts back, someone saying, hey, this paid my car payment. Hey, this paid down my debt. Hey, this paid off my college, kid's college education. I know Still Stillman tells me that it pays off his mortgage every single month, right? And the stories are boundless. And the reason why I share this with you in the moment that we are in now is we're in a period of time where there's lots of change. 
lots of change. And hint, hint, as I kind of hinted to last week, and I'll hint again, you're going to see some momentum into our business model very shortly in the third and fourth quarter. And there are people taking advantage of the profit opportunity that exists within the KW system. And so my challenge to the group is just thinking through how you take advantage of all the opportunities there are and that are available to you within the business model can be compounding because these, these are real numbers and of real deposits that happened last week on the 21st of September. So just wanted to lead with that because ProfitShare is cultural and how it leads and bleeds into our culture of collaboration and community. And a big piece of it is everyone um, that collaboration, what it does to provide to productivity is incredibly powerful. Next, uh, one quick office operations update for the group. Uh, we have successfully received 500 plus letter of acknowledgement signed. There's a hundred of you still outstanding. Uh, just a reminder that the letter of acknowledgement addresses the six key points of the class action lawsuit that we need to make sure that all licensees has, have acknowledged. It was sent from the DocuSign account, klrw972 at kw.com. And if you are one of the final 100, we are going to start to hunt you down. So... If you haven't been paying attention to your emails, we would appreciate it if you would, just so that we can get this out, knocked out of the way. All right, lessons, continuing my theme of lessons in the market of the moment, okay? And I would share with you, this was something that I got recently from being and participating in a mastermind with Gary Keller, okay? And the, the mastermind was pretty simple. He posed a question. And the question is this. What is it that 5% of the top producing agents do that the 95% of agents don't do? That if they were doing it, they would have all the things they want when they basically would want it. What is it that the top 5% do? Or to put it in a more simplistic terms, the 80-20 principle is alive and well. What is it that the top 20% do really, really well that the bottom 80% don't do well? And it's pretty evident. And he went through this basic formula. And here was the formula. One, the top 5%, basically, and using his example, is the top 5% set clear goals because they run, the clear goal is not units and the amount to pay or the business expense and the person expenses and the X makes profit. Run your business like a business, set clear goals. And the reason why I'm planting these seeds for you now is we effectively are at January 1 and you need to be thinking and running your business as such. They track their numbers. They understand where their appointments sit. They understand the agreements they're in. They understand what closings they have coming and they understand the cash flow of income and expenses. And they're tracking their numbers too. Everyone has the same amount of time within a day. How in, we each use that 24 hours varies widely. And so how you become efficient with your time is ultimately the freedom that comes from discipline. Four, they have selected lead gen activities and they are understanding of it and to it. Why? Because they have predictability, not survivability. And five, they have accountability within their business. What you don't hear them say is that I, 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 a selfish I do not hold myself accountable. They have, they have implemented accountability within their business. And the reason why I lead with that right up front is we're going to lead right up front with training and education. Because many of you have heard this from me before, and I'm a big believer in this. Success breeds complacency. Complacency breeds failure. Only the paranoid survive. And so as you're sitting here on January 1 and you're thinking about 2020, as you're sitting here thinking about January 1 of 2025, what is it that you're doing to implement? What is it that you're doing to implement the five things we talked about? Setting clear goals making efficient use of your time, tracking your numbers, being accountable. And what is it that you plan to do differently now so that it shows up in 2025? And I've shared this with you. The reason why I shared this quote with you is success breeds complacency, complacency breeds failure, only the paranoid survive, is this. And I'm hammering this home for a reason. And I've been hammering this home for the last four or five years or for the last four or five weeks. When you look at home sales on an annualized basis, we're down significantly versus the mo most of the market you've only known. And the reason why I say that you've only known is most of the agent world on a macro basis entered the market somewhere between in a rising tide within the last 10 years. 
And so is history repeating self in terms of where the tide sits and how we manage and navigate it? At the same time, I've also shared that sides per agent on a historical basis is down by roughly 50%. And so if your 50% of your units went away tomorrow, would you be able to survive? And the question is for 99.9% .9 of you, the answer is no, right? And so what I'm effectively doing, and the reason why I led with the quote that I did around only the paranoid survive is we have to be paranoid about our activities in order for our, the activities to deliver the results we desire, right? And we've shared with you this concept of the energy dial. And the energy dial in the moment of time that we're in now is we're in the fall cleanup and enter, soon entering into the winter renewal where separation is in the preparation. And the separation is in the preparation so that when January and February roll around, you are rocking and rolling and you know what your pipeline looks like. You're tracking your numbers. You, you're, you're utilizing your time most efficiently because we know that if you miss your first quarter, you can't hit your annual goals. You can't. There's not enough to be made up in the back half of the year, right? Straight up. So with that, I'm going to introduce you guys to Shannon Seelig, who's flying into town to join us on October 16th for business planning clinic. And the reason why I share, I'm sharing this with you now is we need to be thinking ahead around how you're setting your goals, tracking your numbers and building in for success into 2025. Shannon, what do these guys need to know about what they should expect on October 16th? Yes, I am so happy to be with you guys. Thank you for having me, Charlie, and the entire team. So first of all, good morning to you. I am actually in France where I live and work. So it's afternoon for me. And it's also raining here. So we have something already in common. And um, I'm really excited to be with you guys because business planning changed my life. So today, um, as you can see on the slide, all of the things that I've done over my career. However, I have recently partnered with or repartnered with David Huffaker out of Nashville, Tennessee, who runs the number five team in all of Keller Williams. And we've made a lot of mistakes, right? And we have finally realized what to do and what to implement to really build a big life. And so Business Planning Clinic is going to be taking a day for you and your business to really focus on what matters and what's important so that you can get out of the busyness of the day-to-day -day and really sit down and work through the different models and setting goals for 2025. Because when you have a clear path, we know that it's going to help you get where you want to go. And so what we find is that in Business Planning Clinic, agents want one of three things, right? You might find that you want to make more money. And so we're going to focus on helping you make more money by maximizing your profits, maximizing getting those, those deals that you need. Like Charlie said, we're down about 50%, right? So how do we get that back up to where it is or even get even more? And then the other thing that people want sometimes is more time, right? Maybe you want to do the same amount of business, yet you want more time. And so we're going to look at your conversions and we're going to talk about how you can be more efficient and how you can actually maximize what you're doing. And then the last thing is also opportunity, right? The third thing we find that agents want is opportunity is to grow. And maybe you're looking to develop a team, bring on that leverage, or maybe you already have a team and you're looking to go to that next level. And so what we're going to do is really work through those different three opportunities that you might be looking for in that day so that you leave with a clear plan of what you need to do, what you need to change for 2025. Now, the benefit I've been an agent, I've been a team leader, I've coached all different production levels, and David has also done the same. And so you're gonna get all of our experience, all of our knowledge, and we can help you really build a plan that you can follow for 2025. So we're gonna have a lot of fun as well. So we're gonna spend the day together, we're gonna have a lot of fun, and um, and I'm open books, so you can ask me any kind of questions you need that day or even before. Love it. Guys, what you're hearing and seeing from us is this. We want to invest in you of how you find more business, how you develop the opportunities to develop or create or curate more time, and how you create opportunities to grow. And you're learning from the fifth largest team in the entire KW ecosystem. And Shannon's going to be flying in from France to pour into you on October 16th. And as we announced last week, the 80 plus of you who have already registered for Bold, we're giving this to you as a gift. Okay, so join us on October 16th at the War Memorial downtown, and we will be jumping into 2025 business planning to set you up for success. Shannon, thanks for jumping on with our group this morning. Awesome. All right, jumping back into it.
you've heard this before and I need to reiterate something to this group because I think they're missing the point or missing the mark in terms of where they can get and how they get it. Okay. And I use the example of someone was too busy. There's the goose egg. They made an investment. Someone was too busy, been there, done that. They made an investment. They've done this. They've done that. Right. And I've been challenging the group around how bold delivers results because I'm a data driven decision maker. See good data, make a decision. See good data, make a decision. See good data, make an investment. See good data, allocation of, app, of capital. And so I've been challenging the group and trying to drive your awareness to what it is that Bold can do. And yet one of the, some, the many often excuses that I get is, oh, I've been there, done that, I've heard it, the material isn't new, what could be different, so on and so forth. And so I've been dropping these memes throughout the mornings and you're gonna continue to see these around challenging your perspective to get you to pay attention. Because I understand in a world of a lot of noise, I have to generate more noise than what you might have in your RAS in order to get you to pay attention. And if I go back to how do I make good decisions of investing of my time, energy, and resources, I just look at data, point blank. Where do I invest capital? I research data in order to make good investment decisions. I want to invest my time and say yes to something or no to something. I make decisions based on data, right? And so the reason why you're seeing me drop these is I'm trying to interrupt you where you are to get you to pay attention because I so firmly believe that data tells the story, okay? And with that, I invited Amber back on the call this morning. Amber, tell these guys, because the excuse I've heard and what we've heard throughout the week is, oh, I've been there, done that. And yet we also know that this is a whole new bold experience. So Amber, what do these guys need to be paying attention to? Yeah, so I think, first of all, thank you guys for having me back. I am so looking forward. I can't believe 80 of us are already committed. And I think we're gonna have double that, Charlie. Like this is going to be a powerful room where some big things happen. That's my belief, my intention, okay? So I wanna ask you a couple of questions. How many of you by a show of hands or wave at me, you've been to family reunion or mega camp? Okay, I love it. So energy in the room. Um, when you think back on your family reunion and mega camps, which speaker gave you the most information, the most inspiration and kind of stretched your thinking the most? Josh, Phil Jones. Well, hey, there will be some Phil Jones in here. We're so I'm not Gary Keller over here. Okay, good. I was going to say, you guys, there's a guy with a mustache. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, perfect. So Gary Keller, I think we can all agree he is the number one and he's been voted. Swanepoel, Inman, number one most influential mind in real estate has written bold. So the seven manuals of the past, thrown away. This is a completely rewritten, bold experience. Like it's not rewritten. It is completely different. Okay. So we can't say we've seen it before or taken it before because I've done it over 50 times coaching it and I've never seen it. Okay. So, so we don't have that excuse. Okay. So here's a few things. And I put some bullets on, on the, um, the slide deck yet. There's a few things that I want to go over with you. Before that, I, who will be real with me and just be a little bit authentic? Okay, I was a little authentic when I shared my story, so I trust you will be with me. How many of you would like to be in that infamous group, Gary's Top 100, who gets to be belly to belly with Gary, has the Zooms, has the face to face, and gets to be in that room of 200 seats? I love Becky. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, here's another new part of this bold, Charlie. Uh, every single week, we are going to have multiple times so that we can make sure it fits everyone's schedules. Gary Keller, Jason Abrams, Jay Papazan, and other senior leadership of Keller Williams are going to be doing an additional live Zoom. So just I'm in Gary's Top 100. That's what he does with us, a live Zoom. So he can take you deeper into the content. So while you may not be in Gary's top 100 yet, you get the same opportunity as those that are already in Gary's top 100. How cool is that, you guys? Gary believes in bold so much that he's like, I should be doing live Zooms as part of this experience. Let's go. Like this, this is his ultimate dream is to be a teacher and impact 
as many people as he can. So he's super excited about that. I don't know about you. I am very excited. Okay. So a few things on the screen I want to point out, there is social media in every single step. And it's social media that we know that works because it's from our top agents, okay? It's from outside consulting firms like Rory Vaden, um, Ken Posick is going to give his content ladder, okay? The whole foundation of the course is different. We now have something called 10 Bold Truths. And we used to have 34 Bold Laws. Do not throw tomatoes because I promise you I've got the new list of them. And you guys, the original Bold Laws, they still work. They're timeless, yet what we've done is we've ratcheted up our level of thinking and understanding. So we're actually taking the bold laws and making them even more applicable because we already know the 34. Now we're ready for a new level of thinking, okay? There's whole new content around choices, the paradox and the opportunity of choices because the, cho the, the, the choices that you make, not the circumstances in which you're given, the choices that you make determine who you are. So we're going to talk about um, six ways to look at choices. Because sometimes, would you guys agree, not making a choice is the choice? I think mm -hmm. that's what Charlie was just leading into me coming on. Some of us are not making the choice, and that's going to make the choice of what your next quarter of business looks like. Okay? Uh, one thing I love is we're going to talk about happiness as a choice. You guys, I don't know about you, since COVID, there's just been so much downward pressure on us and our spirits as humans, and that happiness is a choice is all the difference, okay? Because at the end of the day, I promise you on our deathbed, we're not going to say, I wish I had worked more. No, we're going to look back and say, I wish I, I had chosen more joy and happiness in this beautiful journey, okay? We're going to talk about time and self-management, okay? I've got like 19 kids over here in Florida. Uh, I run about five or six different companies. I am I pick my kids up from school almost every single day. And here's what I've mastered, and we will talk a lot about it in the room, is time. How do you master time, okay? Because I want you to write this down and think about these words. Time is the currency of achievement. Never heard that in a bold room before. This is all new content. We are also going to cover something brand new that we've never talked about before, and it is how to create your network. As a, as a real estate investor, as a market center owner, as an agent in Gary's Top 100, my network of people is a massive part of my success, okay? Um, I love this. Gary shared it this with us yesterday in training for Bold. He said the people in your life either create a circle around you or a cage. They create a circle. They empower you. They push you forward. They raise you up or they create a cage. We're going to talk about something new called the magic formula of life. And it's your inside life determines your outside life. Your inside life determines your outside life. So if you don't like the number of units you've closed, if you don't like the number on the scale, if you don't like the time you wake up every day, that's all the outside stuff we can see. So first, we're going to work on the inside stuff to create an even better outside. Okay? So there's so much more. I mean, I can go on all new bold logs, so many different changes. Um, we it, it is a whole new bold experience. And when I tell you, as an agent in Gary's Top 100, like this is the stuff he pours into us and teaches us. So I want you to think about this, okay? We all agree the bold works. Like we know it. There are so many people on this screen and Charlie, Charlie and the team, we were looking at the list yesterday. So many of the 80 are the repeat offenders. Like they're the slow learners. They take bold over and over. And I'm right, I'm a slow learner right there with you. Okay. I keep taking it over and over. Because I, I tell my teenagers this, uh, mindset is like personal hygiene. It wears off and you get to revisit it daily. I know that's a gross example, yet it's real. Okay. So here, Becky, I love it. Um, here, here's what I want you to think about. Bold works and it was written by an amazing woman that over her career sold 4,000 homes. Okay. Diana Kokoska. So Charlie has shown us the numbers that it works over and over and over. The agents that pour into themselves and invest have a massive next quarter, okay? So now think about it this way. If it worked for an agent that sold 4,000 homes, 
how much even better is it going to work from the number one real estate coach in the entire industry, Gary Keller, who wrote it himself. I don't know about you, like I have the goosebumps, okay? Um, you guys, who's in? Like we have 80 and I know we're going to have double. Like who else is joining us? And the reason why I share this with you guys, and I invited Amber back on one, so that you could get to better know who she is and her and what the energy that you can expect to bring in the, but also like, she's not wrong. I looked at the list yesterday with her and I was like, huh, history repeats itself. The people that are in the room are the people that have taken it and understood the impacts to it. And the reason why they take it again is they understand the concept of a man never crosses a river twice. The person is never the same man or woman, and the river is never the same water. And so the reason why we're sharing this with you, and I so deeply believe in it, is I know two things. 80% of our industry screws up their year because they missed the fourth quarter, because they missed the first quarter based on the decisions of their activities in the fourth quarter. It's a fact. I see it every day. I see it because I get the agent who comes in in March and says, I haven't had a paycheck since November. What do I do? I'm driving Uber Eats. And I'm like, God, it wasn't that hard. The reason why we push this thing, you and I understand like some of the the um, hesitation to it is you think there's a there's a angle in this. The ang the only angle in it is a culture of productivity because I make decisions based on data and the data tells me a hundred percent of the time you cannot afford to not take it. It's it's a fact. And so Amber, thanks for jumping on to share a little yeah, bit more of your energy absolutely. of what these guys can expect and to give them a little bit more around what it is that they get from the investment that they made and how it might be different in this year's bold experience. I love Appreciate it. And for it. those of you that are already signed up for full bold, oh, Becky, thank you for the kind words. Um, for those of you that are already signed up for full bold, I'll see you in about an hour on the free coaching that I'm doing leading us up to bold. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you, Charlie. Awesome, Amber. Thank you. So we mentioned 80 plus people are already in the room. 258 million of year to date closed volume that represents 6.6 .6 billion in GCI. I just have three really quick question of your peers. And we haven't done this yet this year, but I realized in looking at the list yesterday, I was like more people need to share their story. So I asked Deja, Jamie O'Kelly, the Wilds and Bridget Ty to jump on. Why bold? What's the impact? Why are you doing it again? Why are you making the time energy investment? JLC, I'll start with you. How about you? Why have you taken bold three times? What has it done for you? What is the impact it's had on your family? And why are you doing it again? Or Deja. I, I'm down to talk. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Deja. Why did you do it last year? You weren't even with us last year when you took it. Yeah, so a lot of people actually didn't realize that um, that I wasn't with Keller yet. I It's no secret. If you know, you know, I've been to my fair share of brokerages. Um, but bold is actually what made the difference for me to switch over. I was like, after the first time, I was like, yeah, I'm in. Um, I just needed to close some deals. So whatever. Um, but I think... It was different being that I've been to a lot of different brokerages. I'd never experienced that type of collaboration, the type of access to information, because what I was looking for at the time, trying to figure out if I was going to switch or not, was just more answers to elevate my business. And I knew that the will had already been created. I just wasn't finding out where I was at the time. Um, and then I came to Bold and I was like, wow, uh, literally giving me a book with everything I literally just have to plug and play like you say um and in the past it has been my experience where you say people doing Uber Eats DoorDash last year was the first year in the winter that I didn't have to do that and the only difference for me was that I was doing bold that's you know um and it was my first time it was rigorous um uh, but I think if you apply yourself like what what is there to lose? What is there to do? Literally, other than, I mean, your time, why show up and not apply the information? So um, I think that definitely changed everything for me. And, and honestly, it was the ultimate reason why I came over to Keller and I've been here ever since. So I loved it. Love and it. Might as well do it again. Deja, love it. Appreciate your perspectives. Thanks for sharing. Wilds, how about you? You're one of my examples. You chose not to do it last year. You felt the impacts of your business. Why are you doing it again this year? So I'm sitting two weeks ago at the team meeting 
Sherry and I walk into the team meeting. Our good friend Kevin Gardy comes up to us and is like, uh, are you guys going to take bold this year? And we're like, no, we are not taking bold at all. Are you kidding me? And he's like, ah, uh, I really think you should think about it. And I'm like, Kevin, we're not taking bold. We took it a couple of years ago. We got some value out of it, but you know, like, it's fine. We're not going to take it. He said, you might want to think about it. And I said, Kevin, enough, right? And so we sat in that team meeting and really it came down to Amber. Um, we sat and listened to Amber. Amber, uh, very dynamic speaker and, you know, like, you got to have faith in the people that are going to lead you. And I think um, we both, you know, she's a former teacher. She was very um, compelling. And we thought that she was someone that could add to our business, right? Sherry and I are watching, you know, her presentation. She's a former teacher. Sherry's a former teacher. Um, and after her presentation, we looked at each other and we said, shit, we got to do bold, <laughs> don't we? We both looked at each other and we were like, I think we got to do it. And I think what it is, is it's, you know, we've had a good couple of years, but I go back to kind of what you said about, um, you know, like success breeds, breeds complacency and, and those things. And like, we had a couple of good years and we thought, man, maybe this year was going to be even better than last year. And then suddenly we were like, uh, it's not as good as we had hoped it was going to be. And I think two weeks ago, you know, it was something that really grounded us. And we said, if we do this towards the end of the year, we can set ourselves up for the, you know, a good spring next year. And the fact with all the changes with the NAR settlement and how to talk differently about it and just all of the different things, it's probably just a good idea to have a reboot every once in a while to go back to the foundational things and, you know, and, and, and ground ourselves in bold. So that's why we decided to do it. Thanks, Kevin Gardy. You got, he must be on your payroll. <laughs> Love it. Thank Dan. Appreciate your perspective. Last person bridge. Um, what's it done for you? Why do you keep going back? I mean, you've obviously only known growth. Um, what is it about it that, you know, you say similar to Dan, as I always say, embrace the suck. What is it bridge about you that wants you to keep showing up because you've only grown? I think for me, um, like what else am I doing? I mean, honestly, like on a Wednesday before one o'clock, I really don't have any other plans. Um, but also I don't know if anyone else feels this way and hopefully they don't, but right around October, November, December, I start to feel a little unemployed. It's like, wait, the market's kind of slowing down. Do I have a job? What am I doing? But um, I find bold to be like the perfect time of the year to reset, do some business planning. I love, love the goal setting that bold provides. Um, and then for me, you know, bold is like a buffet and I'm going to pick and choose what I like and what I'm going to take with me. I you know, I'm not going to be able to do everything, nor do I want to do everything. Um, but it's more about being in the room and surrounding yourself with all of these focused, hardworking individuals that motivates me to be better and to do better for the upcoming year as well. Like, I just love, you know, all of the bold material aside, I just love hearing from everybody on what they're doing and their stories that they have, or even just networking and connecting with people and maybe hearing about, you know, off-market opportunities because you just happen to be chatting about that buyer that is sucking your soul and needs a house in, you know, Mequon or wherever. So that's kind of why I keep coming back um, to Bold. I Look, I appreciate it because you've done nothing but grow and you aren't um, you haven't gotten to a point where you've said, I've learned everything. You keep going back to learn from it. And I appreciate the perspective. Last one is JOC. Are you on? I am. Okay. I'll say this point blank. In my seven, eight years, I don't think I've ever seen someone have as much of a personal transformation through the bold experience as I have you. So what is it about bold that you keep <laughs> coming back? Oh, right and I have to talk now Charlie so you can't do that <laughs> um 
well, I took bold for the first time in 2019, just as an admin, like to get the mindset to help my team grow. And I saw how good I was able to do that because of bold. Um, so in 2021, I decided to take it for myself as an agent. And I don't, for those who took it in 2021, I don't remember if you guys remember, but I only went in there with one goal and that was to do open houses and not be scared at open houses. Cause believe it or not, as much as like, I'm like, hi everybody. I'm nervous when I don't know people don't know things about the house. So I try to like, you know, wanted to be on my P's and Q's at open houses. In 2021, Darren Kittleson helped me like beyond what I wanted to do for open houses so well that the Saturday that the whole thing switched over, I successfully signed a buyer agency agreement at that open house. People coming in, loved me, bought the house right then and there, never met them, didn't even have like nervousness in my body about the switch, the change, asking someone and talking at the open house. So that was the year where I was like, okay, this really worked. Like the results are there. Like, and it was the mindset for me. That's the biggest thing. It's not just about growing my business with bold. It's the mindset, the mindset shift that bold gives me. Um, and knowing that Amber is going to be the coach and she's a mom and she's a lady, I'm all for it. Um, cause I wasn't able to take bold last year because Wednesday, 9am, my kids start school and bold was all the way on the other side of town at 9am. So I was like, crap. And the second year I was like, I don't want to miss two years in a row. Obviously my business is not where I wanted it to be this year, which is okay. Things happen. And I did not take bold last year. Um, but this year I am. And Kim really was the one that kind of got me to say yes. Cause she was like, Jamie, there's another mom that has to take her kids on Wednesdays. You can do it. And I was like, you're right. I can do it. Like I'll be 15 minutes late. Who cares? I can do that. Um, and then, Charlie, what you said earlier today about we grow better together. It's so good to be around people that just have the same goals as you, just wanting to grow business. And you learn things all differently. Every year, I learn things, learn new things on how to better build my relationships with clients, stay resilient in things, and accountability. I can, I'm not good at holding myself accountable, but I'm good at holding other people accountable. So I need someone to hold me accountable. And when you're with a team and you have just that captain, that's like, do, 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 do. It, it's like, oh, oh shit. I got to get on myself. <laughs> I, I like, I can't disappoint these people. So yeah. It sounds like we're beating a dead horse because I said to you two weeks ago, I'm going to will you to have the best year ever. And I firmly believe with the changes there is separation in the preparation happening. And those that decide to make choices are the ones that create separation in the pack. And I so firmly believe, because I see it within the marketplace, there are people that are going to be complacent and they will get sideswiped. And they're going to get sideswiped because people made a decision to make an impact. And I so firmly believe in the impact that Bolt has on people. And JLC, the reason why I got choked up with you is I know this to be true. The bold room gave her a level of confidence personally as a single mother with two kids in high school that it transformed her personal life because of the confidence that she got in her professional life. So JOC, love you. Congrats. I love you more, Charlie. <laughs> so uh, that's it. Like training and education is important. And if you don't understand a moment of time of how much change is happening, I can't reiterate it enough. And again, it sounds like I know I get this because I hear it. Oh, he's beating a dead horse. Or he won't move on or this that, and the other. It's because I want it so badly for you to be productive next year and to take your unfair share. So again, data decision, data and analytics are what drive my decisions. Maximizing return on your investment is pretty clear. One incremental deal is a 13x return on your investment. The average agent gets seven. The average return on investment is a 96x return. Point blank, you can sign up. And here's the other thing. We only have 13 people who registered for a scholarship. If you think capital is the objection as to why you can't get in the room, sign up for a scholarship because there's money that we can give to you and that we want to give to you to support you. All right, with that, October, October training calendar is out. Highlight it. Uh, join us for business planning clinic in bold. What you basically need to know is that every Wednesday by 9 a.m., you just need to be at the War Memorial. And if you create consistency in one day a week, it will bleed into two to three days a week. Lastly, because this there's a little rumor mill that went out, I can tell you the rumor mill is true. The holiday party is coming back. It's at the P. Fister Hotel. P. Fister. It's on Thursday, December 5th. 
Thursday, December 5th. Now you'll look at your calendars. You'll also notice all the things that you normally love about the holiday party will be there. It will be a fancy affair. People will really dress up and they'll have a ton of fun. There will be a DJ with live music. You'll have a ton of fun. There will be a photo booth and people will make bad decisions in the photo booth and then we will laugh and that's okay. And also there's a Packer game that evening and we'll have the Packer game on uh, so that we can enjoy the Packer game as well as the casino tables that seem to be a huge hit last year as well. So Thursday, December 5th, mark your calendars upcoming. With that, I'm flipping it over to Sheriff Reed. Sheriff Reed, what do you got for the group this week? Well, good morning, everybody. It's um, this da time that we're going to talk about on compliance today is really just a reminder. Uh, but it seems like you don't do single party listings that often, but when you do, then you have questions. So Steph and I get questions on it. I just want to set up a review of the difference and the um, similarities with an excluded listing and a single party listing. So I'm not going to read through all of this. Most of you know what this is when the excluded listing. The bottom line is MLS says if you're not advertising on MLS, you're not advertising anywhere else. So that um, you cannot put it on social media. You cannot put it really anywhere. Any excluded listing really is the responsibility of the listing agent uh, by word of mouth and um, are also our submitted listings to Willis um, so that we as a company know what our excluded listings are, but that is um, okay. Other than that, we can't market them. So if you're caught marketing and you have to put it back as active within 24 hours, by the way. So that's the reminder about excluded listings. If you're still really unsure about excluded listings, call Steph or call me or go to the MLS fax uh, page. They're very thorough. If you call MLS, they're very helpful. So there should be no confusion about excluded listings. But sometimes instead of putting in an excluded listings, your seller or you would like to do a single party listing. And you've got to be careful here. Um, with a single party listing, it's non-exclusive. And the biggest part of that is to realize that the seller can also sell his house. Another agent from another firm can also sell his house. Um, so you are not an exclusive right as you would be with a real listing contract or even an excluded listing contract. Um, so make sure that you understand that and you cross off the title of the listing contract where it says exclusive right to sell, cross that off. Next one. Um, so here it's talking about exclusive, crossing off that exclusive right to sell because that you do not have that in a single party listing. Um, the way you draft one is you take a regular listing contract and you put in, this is a single party listing for named prospect and you name the potential buyer that wants to um, look at the house. Um, you don't have to name one if you have a very short term on this single party listing. Um, that's one way to do it, but the preferable way to do it is if you somebody says, I need a house and such and such, and you can say, let me see if I can get a single party on a house that I know that would just fit. So um, that's the majority of single party listings with a named prospect. That's why they're called single party listings. If more people find out about it and want to be uh, brought in as one of these buyers, you can do an amendment to the single party listing contract just like the amendment to the listing contract and add additional names if you get any. So um, next slide. The reason that uh, most people want to have a single party listing is because of the seller. The seller is um, maybe high profile in the city, doesn't want people to know his house is for sale. Um, 
it's not always the best way to get the highest price because the full market and the free market uh, will develop the highest price for the property. But if they say the house isn't ready, but if this buyer wants to come in, then you can do a single party for this specific buyer. Um, seller maybe just wants to put his toe in the market and see how that flies with a, a buyer, possible buyer. Um, but those are the reasons to do it. Don't do it to the point where it says that it looks like a pocket listing. Um, it You have to have an actual listing contract that's drafted as a single party contract. So avoid, if possible, using the single party listing to gather more named prospects uh, for showings. That's not what it's for. And as I said, uh, the state of Wisconsin says pocket listings are not allowed and you could be stepping into a libelous situation if you're using this single party to um, gather names. Really should be for a single party or maybe a couple of others drop in. So it's better to get it listed, put it in excluded, and it protects the seller with the same concerns. Um, where you submit excluded listings or single party listings, go to our homepage and at KWMKE and in the title page, this is where you submit a single party listing or an excluding listing to Willis that becomes an in-house published list. Um, so make sure that you uh, check in there and make sure that our uh, agents are aware of it. Uh, the listing report, um, again, we make sure that you can see all the listings that are in these excluded coming soon or single party categories. All right. The whole goal is to leverage mm -hmm. our economy of scale, help you guys get access to information to help you win more deals. And the way we do that is by trying to drive a consortium of information of what's available from a listing standpoint. Reminder, continuing ed is coming up and is due December 14th. Yep. Continuing ed can be found through the WRA. It's the most simplistic, basic, straightforward. And your dues came out September 13th for GMAR and they are due this fall as well. Cool. Share free. Appreciate, uh, appreciate your support. Thank you. Thanks, sister. All Bye -bye. right. August awards, wrapping it up. Okay, and I want to remind the group of something as we follow it up. It felt very heavy in training education. It was, and it is on purpose. Again, not something you want to hear, but it's something you need to hear. And that's my job is to challenge the way you think in order to change the way you act. Is this, everyone is jealous of what you've got. No one is jealous of how you've got it. So everyone wants the view, but no one wants the climb. So as you look and recap where it is that the August results came in, is look at it not so much about what they did in terms of productivity. I would be looking at this as to what they do to garner the productivity. What choices or actions they have? Who do you aspire to be? Who are you inspired by? Here we go. August Home Run Club, one listing taken, one contract written, one contract closed. This is a big group. And here's the best part about it. I mentioned how June was off by about 12% of historical Junes. July came back strong, August came back stronger. And last week I alluded to that the market is funky, right? The market is funky. The beautiful thing is, is one listing taken, one contract written, one contract closed by a significant group of people in the month of August means you're being productive. And I'm gonna continue the willpower of you being productive into the future. Million Dollar Month Club in the month of August, also significantly a large group. And the reason why I share with you that the significance to this is typically on a seasonal basis, August is when you start to see the seasonal impact of the market slowing down. We didn't see that this year. I'm curious as to see where how September shakes out because the market is funky. However, yet yeah, you can see the results that a lot of people have had in the month of August. Now, percentage volume increase year to date. Want to give a shout out to Melina Cortez, Paul Schmidt, William Lauer, Devin White, Teresa Brown, Brandon Riles, Noach, Deborah, Amber, Christy, Melissa Waters, Jackie Ryan Schnapp, Kendrick Taylor, Nick Wessel, Andrea Cavello. Congrats on having the highest percentage volume increase year to date through August. 
GCI for agents on a team, Steph Miller, number one, Janine Warner, two, Martha Ola, three, Ginger Lazovic, Kathy Shaw, Maggie Train, Will Stale, Ellen Pertel, Casey Lopez, Megan Stale, Steph Minnick, Kirsten Lindstrom, Catherine Eaglehoff, Andy Stillman for agents, GCI on a team. August individual volume, again, what is it that these people are doing to garner the results that they've done? Mary Beth Milkey, congrats on leading the way. Alina Zeman, Jean Jaskowski, Jessica Hinawi, Carla Florence, Nada, John Molitor, Sarah Oberbrunner, Ethan, Damara, Abby Wall, Jordan Shelton, Guy, Amy, Paul, Elise, Bethy, Bethany, apologies, Becky, Natasha, Tori, Wagner, Bridget, Ty. Look, there isn't an individual on this list that didn't do north of a million bucks in August. What is it that they're doing and what activities that they're doing and how are they showing up? And guess what? The other thing is you look at this list, almost all of them are incredibly engaged in training and education. They understand that a true school is never out for a true professional. So congrats on an incredible August for individual agents. August team volume, FRG leading the way, JSG, SRG, Team Trimble, PPG, On Point, Levine, The Gossman Group, Kindred, Root River, Wessel, Gallagher, Duvall, Champagne, Holt, William Lauer, Destes, Enlightened, Doublebolt, Fair Hinton, rounding out. August team volume. Again, what is it that the teams do well? Who are you inspired by or who do you aspire to be? Take notes. Put it into action this fourth quarter to set you up, yourself up for 2025. The irony of it is, too, this group, from a team's perspective, requires a lot of accountability. It's the reason for their success. They do the activities and implement change within their business. Year-to-date individual volume or individual units, Molitor leading the pack with 86, Lori. Abby Wall, Sarah Oberbrunner, Jean, Bridget Ty, Joey Carini, Ethan Masson, Elena Zeman, Tamara Bolton, Nick Fetting, Jessica Hanawi, Elise Bolt, Kristen Stahulik, Lindsay Andrews, Dan Wild, Ross Treffer, Kevin Madsen, Bethany Clark, and Jordan Shelton, rounding out year-to-date individual units. Year-to-date team units, JSG, Root River, FRG, SRG, On Point, Levine, PPG, excuse me, A Key Home, Enlightened, Duvall, Destes, Fernwood, Miller Marriott, Fair Hinton, The Gossman, Wessel, Team Trimble, Double Bolt, and Champagne Realty, rounding out team units. Year two date, individual volume. Gene Jaskowski, with John Molitor on his heels, Bridget Ty right there, Becky Thomas, Elena Zeman, Abby Wall, Ethan Masson, Kristen Stahulik, Sarah Oberbrunner, Carla Florence, Jessica Hanawi, Robin McCormick, Joey Carini, Mary Beth Milkey, Elise Bolt, Lori Sorok, Ross Treffer, Betsy Williamson, Damaren Bolton, Kevin Madsen. What is it that they do to get the results of this to show up? That's what I would be studying this fall. Year to date team volume, JSG, FRG, SRG, On Point, Root River, Team Trimble, Destys Team, PPG, Duvall, Double Bolt, A Key Home, Gallagher Lake Country, Fair Hinton, Miller Marriott, Levine, Enlightened, Fernwood, Gossman, Wessel, and Kindred, rounding it out for team volume year to date. Guys, I will leave you with this. You have decisions that you can make and how you spend your time every day, okay? And the reason why I've been hammering so much about training and education and productivity is I am trying, to, I so desperately want you to have set yourself up for such an incredible 2025 that the pain and or let's just call it suffering because I understand embracing the suck mentality that you might feel that you of the investments that you make, whether it's bold, whether it's business planning, planning, whether it's showing up and rewatching the new normal conversations to learn new scripts and dialogues and to learn how people are doing it. When you do those things, the success follows. It's pretty simple. And I so desperately want that for you in 2025, which is why I've been hammering at home the last few weeks coming out of all the industry changes, because I think there's a real opportunity at this moment of time for you to take advantage of it in 2025 is when you put your foot on the freaking gas. Make sense? All gas, no brakes heading into 2025. Here you go. Guys, have a great day. Thanks for showing up.